I lost every dime. I lost every dime, every nickel, every penny, every cent. And when my channel my name is Katrina if this is your first time joining me on this channel welcome so glad to have you I am going to be getting up close and personal with you tonight excuse my appearance it's a snow day it's storming out so I'm just getting real homey and the hair is not done but tonight I just want to get up close and personal candid if you will I'm just gonna give you my backstory I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me who I am and how I got started um, as promised from last year, I, I would tell you guys how I started my entrepreneurship journey. I literally left my nine to five full time, good paying job, walked away from everything cold turkey. And I took that leap of faith and I started my own business. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, hopefully I can motivate you. Hopefully I can just inspire you, but I don't want to scare you because entrepreneurship is a journey entrepreneurship can be challenging but i definitely want to share my journey and how it all happened for me and how i got to where i am today okay so i'm just going to keep it all the way real with you guys and i'm going to tell you a little bit about myself i'm going to go back i have to give you a little bit of backstory so that way you'll understand you know how it all happened for me or why i did what i did there's always a reason why people do what they do. So everyone's reason is different. Everyone's finances is different. Everyone's situation is different. Um, and everyone's motivation is different. Everyone's hustle is different. My grind doesn't look like yours. So, you know, you have to say to yourself, when you're starting a new business, you have to say to yourself, what kind of person am I? Am I truly a go-getter? Am I a hustler? Or am I a procrastinator? You know, these are things that you have to consider. And you really have to be honest with yourself because that will actually actually um, set the tone for what type of business you'll have and how you conduct your business throughout the life of it. I just want to be completely open and transparent with you guys because that's just the type of person I am. You know, I started my channel to help to show all the behind the scenes of my business as I'm growing. I started it from scratch. My very first video on my channel way back when um, was me building my table, me like setting up my room, different things like that. But just to give you a little bit of backstory about myself, and I don't want this video to be too long. So I hope you guys can bear with me and, you know, stick out through the whole entire video. I promise you that, you know, hopefully it will inspire you. But I'm from New York, of course. You know, I moved down here about five years ago. I live currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I used to be a conductor. I used to be a full-time traveling conductor with Amtrak for about 10 years, making good money. So I ended up getting fired from Amtrak. Like, just let's be honest. Let's keep it all the way 100 after 10 years. I got fired and it was because of a special program that I was in as a peer leader long story short you know something changed schedule changed at the last minute and I had to you know I had a child I literally just had my son not too long ago so I was like uh I can't just leave my son you know anyway went through all the different um, litigations and everything ended up losing my job I literally thought I was gonna keep my job but you know just so happened that you know they let me go um, and everything is for a reason. Everything is, you know, a blessing in disguise. I say everything set me up for a comeback. So that's how life happened for me. I had a really, really good job. Bought my house, bought my cars. I was doing good in New York because, you know, New York is expensive, but because of the job and the career I had, I won't say a job, I had a career, but um, life happened, lost my job. Then I went into real estate was doing really well with that you know I had tenants you know I was I was doing good but um I just was like ah, I want more this is not really you know what I wanted to do after I lost my job with Amtrak things kind of went down for me um and I just wasn't as happy as I was even though I liked real estate but you know it's more of a grind I was like okay I gotta really get out here and grind to get this money like how I was making an Amtrak um but long story short um, I just wanted more. I was like, you know what? Uh, I need to do something else. And then I had family in my ear from down here. I was like, why don't I just relocate, come down here? He was trying to get everybody down here. So, you know, we would come to visit and long story short, I ended up relocating to Charlotte. 
my son was probably about five i believe um and while we were in new york i noticed that my son would just cry a little bit too long i noticed that you know he would have temper tantrums just way too long terrible twos was over um but you know me being a first time mom me being you know a new mom not really knowing all the different things or signs to look for i was kind of in denial but my mother was the one who kind of pushed me to get him tested to get see what was wrong take him you know to a doctor just see um, and he was diagnosed with ADHD in New York. So we were seeing therapists and different things like that. And I was like, you know what? This seems to be a little bit more than just a hyper kid. ADHD is nothing major. Um, you just gotta deal with it. You gotta cope with it, you know? Um, so I was like, okay, or I had blinders on. So anyway, we moved down here. Um, my family moved with me to help me, but I moved early, you know, to get everything set up, you know, because I had to start working for the post office. I took a job with the post office and let's just say that was not the move for Trina. Um, delivering mail in the cold, in the rain, being chased by dogs. And then one day when I fell with all the mail in a person's front yard, I was like, oh, this is not for me. So I knew right then and there that that was just a transitional job. The income was okay for down here. Nothing like what I was expecting. And I was like, you know what? I got to do something else. So, you know, I just started applying for other jobs. I knew I didn't want to go back to Amtrak because I didn't want that li living out of a suitcase life again. So I ended up applying for CATS. It's a rail system down here. And um, it was really good because I ended up with the supervisor position because, you know, I'm a boss. So I ended up being a dispatcher, being in charge of the train operators. So that was really cool. The income was good. Um, it was a salary. It was my highest paying job since I had moved to Charlotte but it was based on seniority. So my time scheduling slots, you know, one shift I was working early, early in the mornings that would only allow me to see my son after he got home from school. And then the other shift that I had got bumped to was the overnight shift. And I was like, oh my Lord, I was getting no sleep, no sleep whatsoever. So literally right after I'm making dinner, doing homework with my son, I gotta go to work. I'm missing everything at night. I'm not getting any sleep. So my body had to readjust. Then when I get home, I get like two hours of sleep, to get right back up to go get my son ready for school then i come back home try to sleep have to get right back up get him from school didn't have to do it all over again so i was just not happy i was not happy long story short and i'm probably gonna keep saying that long story short um through all of this i'm noticing because you know my son is getting older that things are just not you know going smoothly with my son i'm just noticing that he's not happy he's irritable you know um anything can set him off now my son is a happy kid a happy kid bubbly jokester prankster loves clowning around and i love you know that characteristic about him but when the slightest thing goes wrong all hell can break loose um so still in therapy my home is being disrupted because i got therapists in and out my home or i'm taking him to see therapists um after evaluation after evaluation finally you know they tell me that he has um odd oppositional defiance disorder and you know heart oppositional defiance disorder is really hard you know for other people on the outsiders looking in because to other people they like your child is bad your child is disrespectful he just don't listen you just need to get them rude you know so for me being the mother that i am and being raised with the southern family like we don't play you know i had never seen it really with any of my other cousins or anything like that so i'm just like Yo, what is going on what is you know my child was raised right so i'm having all these issues at home trying to cover it up on the front end so now my son is getting older and what we call now his disorder is what we know I was just being exposed to it. I was just seeing it and I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to handle it. So jumping ahead, he was eventually diagnosed with um, destructive mood disorder as well. He was diagnosed with high anxiety as well and a mild case of OCD on top of all of that. So my son had all these letters going on and I'm just like, this is my first child. Like I can't, you know, what 
I, I didn't know what to do. Um, so me just being the person I am, just like stepping out every day, just acting like everything is perfect, but going back home and literally dealing and coping and learning strategies, reading books, you know, just trying to help and deal with my son's, you know, um, just challenges that he was facing because the littlest thing that could be simple to one other kid might stress my son out. Um, there were good days, but there were a lot of bad days. So it was just like, it was, you didn't know what day you was going to get with my son. So you see my son in these videos, but he's only filmed when he's having a good day. He's only filmed when he's in a good mood. Now we're at a better place now because, you know, we've gone through day treatment. We've gone through, you know, therapy. We've gone through the intensive home. My son still has a lot of challenges and social issues. So I just want to put that out there. So when you guys see me and you see me on the video and it might look like I know everything, it might look like I have all the answers, it might look like I got it all together, know that I could be having a whirlwind of a day. And I'm not going to even cry, but um, just know that you never know what someone is going through in their personal life. You never know what it took for someone to get to where they are. So I say all that to say, throw away all the excuses because I had plenty. I had plenty of excuses not to be able to start my business. Moving forward, COVID happened and now I got to homeschool my son. Now I'm working the night shift. You know, I moved out. My family and us no longer live together. It's just me and my son in this house. COVID, full-time homeschooling. And I'm like, oh my God, I literally have to deal with my child full-time. So now when it came to school, before COVID happened, I was literally getting called off my job minimum three times a week because of something that was going on in the school with my son. Something wasn't going his way, whether he was being good. Just know that I had so many circumstances that were surrounding me that I was just like, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do for my son anymore. Um, so I was either going to get fired or I knew I had to quit. I had to come up with a backup strategy soon. So post office didn't work out. Now I'm at Cats, you know, and it's like, all right, I got this brand new job. I'm making more. I'm in a career job where I can climb the ladder. But I'm like, how do I explain to them that, you know, sometimes being a single parent, I have to leave, drop everything and go to my child because I'm his only parent down here. My mother don't drive. So I got all these combinations, all these factors coming into play. And I literally would have to leave, you know, uh, unless I'm, you know, driving, operating a train, which I had to do sometimes. Yes, she was driving trains. But um, life was hard. Life was hard for me. Right before COVID hit, I'm not sure exactly when the timeline happened or when it happened. I knew that I wanted more. I knew that I had these visions and goals and dreams. And I knew somehow or another I had to bring it to fruition. Now, I was a part-time photographer in the beginning. When I moved down here, that's when I started my part-time photography business. I always had a love for photography, always been my passion. So I started that. Um, I started honing in on my skills. I had a great um, mentor in New York who trained me, answered all my questions. You know, I followed them, you know, because they were like family friends. So they taught me the business. Um, just studying, just learning, researching, buying my equipment, investing in myself, um, going out to Walmart and finding cute babies, finding cute pregnant women, asking them, begging them, you know, just letting them know I'm just starting out. Would you like free pictures? Different things like that. So that's how I started out, giving out free pictures, building up my portfolio, building my website, putting my Instagram and Facebook page together. And then once I started building up my portfolio based on giving out free pictures, literally giving out so much of my time for free, editing for free, like it takes a while. But, you know, it's things that you have to do when you're first starting up from the ground up. So I literally built my photography business that way, but it still wasn't bringing in enough income to replace what I was doing. I was only getting gigs here and there, side gigs. You know, eventually I, you know, started booking weddings, but you know, I loved it that I love photography. You guys have no idea. But at the same time, I was like, this is just not still moving fast enough for me. So what else can I do? So one day I went to my family, had a little sit down meeting. I called them all together and I'm like, you know what? Um, and I had to get over that fear because I'm like, what 
are they going to think? You know, I've always been the one to have a secure job. I've always been the one to, you know, be kind of the, the leader out of the sisters, different things like that. Now I'm about to go tell my family that I think I want to quit my job and start my own clothing business, start my own clothing brand. Surprisingly, my family was very open. My mother was like, are you sure? Like, I don't think you should quit just yet. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna quit just yet, but I am about to give them my notice because now we're in the middle of COVID. Now um, I'm homeschooling my son full time. And because I already know the challenges and difficulties, it was gonna be so hard for me working at night, homeschooling my son of the day, getting no sleep, I just was like, I just can't do it because my son wasn't the kid where I can say, go do this and he would go do it and I come back and check it. No, I had to be in school all over again. So it was so challenging, it was so hard. I made the decision, took the leap of faith and I said, now was the time because my son needed me full time. And in order for me to give him all my energy, all my full-time support and still doing therapy. And I had to walk away from my job. So it was a decision that I made, but I had my plan in place. I had my strategy in place. Now, how much money did I have saved up? I only had probably about two months rent, to be honest. And I probably only had a few, I mean a few thousand dollars to invest in myself. So I knew going in that I was really gonna have to move fast, be serious, be dedicated, and I couldn't procrastinate. I had to literally be on the fast track because I knew in only about two to three months, I was gonna be out of money, literally out of money. And I had a child to support. I had a mouth to feed. I was giving up my insurance. I was giving up all that. So those are things that you have to consider when you wanna start your business. I do not recommend anyone to just quit cold turkey without any type of savings, without a plan, without some sort of business model. You know, I just had to do what I had to do for me in my home because of my son's situation, because of my son's circumstances. That's what motivated me. So literally when I say my home was in chaos most days, homeschool was crazy. Now my son is smart. My son was in Gifted and Talented. My son was in a specialized school for acting. He was a signed actor at one point. We had to let that go. My son was auditioning for Tyler Perry and people. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I would have all these proud moments of him, you know, but it was such a struggle. It was such a struggle to get him to those, to get him to those places, to get him to that level because he didn't have any type of drive. My son just didn't have the motivation. It's hard to explain. Um, He's good with family, he's good with the people he knows, but new people, it's hard for him. It takes him a while. Um, then he has disruptive mood disorder, so he could come into an audition and anything could set him off. If someone got too close to him or if someone bumped him by accident, it would just throw off the whole audition. Um, <laughs> it was a lot. When I tell you I was always trying to keep him at bay, um, I was always trying to... Um, keep him calm i was always trying to you know just keep the outburst listen anyone who has dealt with a child who has adhd or oppositional defiance or disruptive mood disorder it, it's it's my heart would just break i would you know literally be in my bed at night just crying praying like what can i what am i doing wrong blaming myself you know I, I just went through so many phases i just went through so many phases and i'm not gonna cry on this video but um just know that it's not easy it's not easy so for me starting my business at the time i did was kind of you know, a necessity. It was detrimental that I succeed. It was kind of like, I got to do this because I got to be all in with my son and I got to be all in with, in my business. So if you are going through anything in your life, that's why I say you got to take away the excuses. You, you literally have to because I was literally homeschooling my son at the same desk in a different position. 
He's on one side, I'm on the other side. He's doing his work, I'm checking his work, and I'm literally sketching out designs. I'm literally coming up with, you know, my logo. I'm literally, you know, trying to figure out my business plan. So first I had to come up with my business name. I came up with my business name and I was like, all right, I know what I want, but how am I gonna convey that? How am I gonna get this to be relatable to people? You know, the name of my, my business was Moving Grace. So I'm like, everyone's not gonna look at that and be like, uh, but you don't do that either with Versace, right? I would have never just came, like, how did they come up with Versace? How did they come up with these names? So I knew that as a business owner, as you know, someone who's trying to brand themselves, that I had to be able to create content around it that is going to um, compel you, draw you in. So first, when you're starting your business, you have to think about all that. You know, how are you going to brand yourself? How are you going to, you know, um, create content around it? How are you going to market your business? Because now I have to decide, am I going to run ads? Am I not going to run ads? Because that's money, right? I had to decide what equipment what I was going to buy. What equipment was I going to start? out with because your girl was on a budget I was on a budget so I probably had about three to four thousand dollars if that I don't think I had I, I know I didn't have five so I gotta get a good heat press get a good cutting machine get you know clothes and vendors I knew I could not afford in the beginning to buy large quantities overseas at Alibaba anything like that I, I knew I couldn't afford or didn't want to go the route of buying um, samples and having them shipped in tests and risking not liking them having to do it all over again so I had to search. I had to Google. I paid for some paid mentorship programs and I'm just like, y'all give me answers. I already know. I need information that I don't know. So I had to stop that. People are not giving you their blueprint to success. People are not always willing to give you their one, two, three, and four step program. They say they are, but you still have to go out there and give it. It's like they're giving it to you. They're telling you what to do, but they're not telling you what to do really. And I'm just like, why did I pay for this? I had to take the bulls by the horn. I had to take, you know, the initiative myself. And whatever information I couldn't find, um, whatever gaps were missing, I'm Googling. I'm down the rabbit hole and I'm on page 30 of Google as opposed to stopping on page three. You have to keep going. A lot of people, when they're looking for answers, they want the answers, just give it to them right in their face. But things don't come easy all the time. Things do not come easy all the time. I'm just going to let you guys know. While you guys are out here trying to start your business and everything and you guys say, you know, you want it, but you have to fight for it. You have to go and find it because it's not going to come to you. I put in countless sleepless nights. I put in so many hours on the front end trying to make sure I had all my T's crossed, all my I's dotted, as my uncle could say, because I wanted to make sure I did it right and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was doing it in a way that, you know, I was going to be proud and I was going to make my family proud. And I didn't want people looking at me like, uh, sorry, we told you, you know, because you know, you have the naysayers, you know, you have people that will doubt you, you know, you quitting your job, you're walking away from your job. Yeah, let's watch and wait for her to fail. So I didn't want that, you know, um, not because of what people um, were going to say, because literally I didn't really care. I was doing it for me and my family. I'm doing it to build a legacy, to leave something behind for my son. That's what I was doing. I'm trying to build wealth for me and my family. So I did the work. I put in the work and I researched. Whatever I couldn't find on YouTube, I researched. You know, I called around. I had to get my license. I had to get, you know, my business name. I started out with a doing business ads. I didn't just go ahead and just get an LLC. I did a doing business ads, filed that with my local, you know, government because <clears throat> Because, you know, when you're just testing the waters, you want to see, you know, you don't want to pay all this money. So I definitely started out with a DBA, doing business ads, got my EIN, which was free, got that the same day, you know, then I had to get a logo. So I'm like, okay, now I got to go to get a logo. I didn't want to pay so much money to get a logo done. So I went to Fiverr. Fiverr is somewhere that you can go and get logos made on the low starting out at like five dollars but i got three different graphic designers to do my logo and they were nice and i would show it to other people my close circle only the people who i told about my business got their opinions some of them liked them some of them didn't but it still wasn't sitting right with me it wasn't saying moving grace it wasn't representing me i'm like i need something that's really going to pop 
So guess what I did? I didn't want to pay another person. I got on YouTube and I found out how to merge letters, how to, you know, create a logo, how to do this and how to do that. Anything I did not know how to do before I started to outsource it, I researched it and I said, let me see if I can do it myself. So I made my logo myself. This is my logo. This one is kind of big. This was my first very sweatsuit mock-up. So of course my logo isn't this big anymore. But I say that to say, when you are doing things, when you're trying to scale your business and you're trying to keep costs low and you want to bring in more profits, see if you can do it yourself first because, you know, things aren't as hard as they seem. You just have to have the time. You have to have the patience. So it took me a while. Y'all been like, how did I do my logo? I'm not doing a video on how I did my logo because I can't teach how to make a logo. I literally sat and followed step by step on how to do certain things and do certain tricks in Photoshop and I made my logo. So from then on, and everyone loved it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start doing things by myself. You know, I'm just gonna start doing what I can by myself, you know, so that way I can keep my costs low. So after I got my business name, my logo and stuff, now I gotta build my website. I had to learn how to do that. You know, of course I had already built a photography website, so I kinda had, you know, an idea. But this is a, you know, this is a brand, a clothing line. I wanted to make sure that it was good. I still don't have it to where I want it today. I still need my, you know, website to pop more or whatever. But um, I got it up and running. So now when it comes to purchasing inventory, what I did for me and my business, because I was literally still working with a limited budget, the best thing to do when you're starting out and you have a limited budget or no budget is to do a pre-sale. So that's what I did. You know, because I didn't buy in bulk overseas, because, you know, I didn't have a lot of money to buy, I did pre-sale. So I only literally bought in the beginning like five items of every color that I was going to sell in every size. That in itself is a lot of money, like to buy sweatsuits and shirts and stuff. Um, so I had like five small, five small white and black t-shirts shirts, five small white and, you know, mediums. Then I had, you know, like maybe three colors of the sweatsuits and I did small, medium, large, extra large. I was like, oh God, 2X costs a little bit more. So, you know, I only came out with a limited stock. I only purchased a limited stock because I did want to get the feel of it. So after I found my vendor, I, you know, purchased just a little bit, I mean, a little bit enough, you know, just so I can, you know, get the feel of the material, do some advertising, take some pictures, actually see how it looks on the garments and stuff. So the pre-sale allowed me to open my website now my photography business is coming in key because I don't have to hire a photographer now I can take the pictures of myself now I can get people from my church that will look like they fit my brand now I can get some of my family members to come take pictures model the clothes see you know try on have a fitting see what they like you want to get people's reactions to your stuff you want to see how real people you know feel about your clothes because if nobody likes it then that's a problem so, you know, remember, I only had told my family. Now I have to tell a few other people because now I need them to come and see my samples. Now I need them to come and, you know, try on and take pictures and model for me. So it just so happened that, you know, I don't know if it's just because my family just loves me or just because they didn't want to be like, oh, that's whack. But they were all happy for me. They were all like, yo, this is dope, you know. So it just gave me another confidence boost. It gave me, you know, that extra push I needed. So they came over. I was like, y'all got to look good. Y'all got to get your hair done, you know. So, you know, we're taking pictures. We're doing things. And I'm ready. I'm ready. But am I ready? Am I ready? Um, so now I am editing photos. I'm doing all this and, um, it still wasn't like, you know, of course, top professional or anything like that, but it was something I'm making a start. It doesn't have to be perfect time you start because you're going to grow. You're going to continue to get better and better over time. So my website was okay. My website was, let's just say better than some, but you know, I definitely knew that, I wanted it to be much better. I needed more potential. But of course, you know, I'm just starting out and I'm still learning. So I'm okay with where I am because, you know, it could have been worse. So I started, I opened up, I launched and I did pre-sale and lo and behold. So when I tell you that 
the sales just came in. I was so shocked. I was blown away. I was getting more orders than technically I could handle. But the pre-sale allowed me, I gave myself about maybe two to three weeks. It allowed me, you know, because I got the income, because I got the revenue from the pre-sales. And now I can use that money to actually go and buy the actual garments, the amount, the supply that I actually needed. Because I didn't want to have too much on hand and be left with inventory. I didn't want to be able to not supply because I didn't have enough money. So a pre-sale allows you to get the revenue when they purchase so then you can take that revenue and turn around and purchase what you need so that worked out perfect for me in the beginning and that's how I started so moving ahead doing good but as I'm starting I said I knew I wanted to document my whole journey I knew I wanted to you know show behind the scenes um, because I had already had a family channel with me and my son and I was documenting our journey dealing with our home life situation with his challenges that's how I started my YouTube journey but it got to the point where when I was filming him, it would agitate my son even more. It would make him, you know, not want to film. You know, we would have nice cooking videos. We would have pranks and family challenges, games and different things like that. But now, but when I was really trying to shed light on, you know, the disorders and challenges that, you know, mothers might face, he was like, I don't want to be recorded. I don't want you telling everybody my problems. Um, so, you know, just having a real candid, up close conversation with him. So I stopped the filming for a while. Um, but some people kept telling me, Trina, you need to film. You need to do put up hidden cameras where he can't see it um, because you could really help somebody else. Um, it was heartbreaking because, you know, I didn't always want to be filmed either in the light that, you know, I might be yelling at him or I might be, you know, impatient with him one day. Um, but it was just real, real, real life situations that I was going through because I'm trying to do so well in business. But at the same time, I felt like I was failing as a mother. It was really hard. Um, it was so hard because the more I move forward or the more I advance, I want to bring my son along. I want my son to enjoy that as well. But because one day we could be doing so great and then five minutes later, everything could just be blown apart. I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I was like tipping the scale back and forth, back and forth, because there were times when I felt like I was putting so much energy into my business and trying to get this thing up and running and flowing. I was losing focus and my son was getting worse. Then when I'm like, all right, now let me put all my focus and energy into my son. You know, we were doing therapy. We was doing intensive home. I had to end up I'm putting him in day treatment facility. I mean, there was just so much that was going on. So as I'm putting so much focus and stuff on him, now my, my Christian clothing brand started to decline. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I don't have a job. Like I, this has to work, but I have to make sure my son is good too. So me just being a mother, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm technically not superwoman. You know, we're, we're looked at as if we're superwoman, but I'm not really a superwoman. You know, how can I juggle both of these? You know, because I quit my job because my son needed me full time. I quit my job to start my business, but it's both requiring a lot of me. So then that's when I was like, all right, I'm going to have to, you know, have a backup plan. So that's when I got into crafting. That's when, you know, I started doing the blinging and I started, you know, doing just regular t-shirts because not everybody is into Christian apparel. So I said, you know what, in order for me to bring in more revenue, I need to supplement my income. I need to, you know, have other stuff. I need to create an Etsy shop because, you know, I hear Etsy is the move. I hear Etsy is where it's at. Um, I still was doing photography here and there, but you know, the photography was getting less and less because I didn't really have time. But, um, but then one day I booked the wedding. So, you know, your girl was doing her thing, you know, things was looking up. I was like, okay, this is where the money is at. So that's where I need to be at the wedding venues and stuff. Um, jumping ahead. I'm gonna just tell you when you think everything is going good, anything could happen. I don't want you guys to think that everything was just all good. I didn't get sales every day. You know, I did really well when I first started, really well. I was doing so good. But then of course, you know, the it fades out. You have to figure out how you're gonna keep that momentum going. You have to figure out how are you gonna keep, you know, your brand alive. Basically, you know, you know, with new strategies. I never ran Facebook ads because I didn't have the money for it. Technically, I felt like I didn't want to, you know, put my money up on it. I heard good things and bad things. So I just didn't go that route yet. I just had to be creative, you know, I was just trying to do everything I can. 
Next thing you know, out of nowhere, I get scammed out of all my money. And when I tell you I could have crawled into a hole and died, I just, I reached an all time low. Why did this happen to me? So now I started my business with a leap of faith. I started my business with me trusting God to take me through this new season and to say, if this is for me, then it will happen. You know, we sometimes have a vision. We sometimes have a dream. We have goals and our fear keeps us from executing it because we look over down the block and we say, oh, Susan is doing the exact same thing. We look over there around the corner and we're like, my goodness, Michael got the same exact you know, idea as I. You look on social media and everybody is doing, seems like the same business plan as you. So you say to yourself, well, how can I be different? Why would anyone buy from me? So I had to get over my fear. I had to put all that aside and I had to say, you know what? God gave me a vision. God gave me a gift. So he will make room for it. So that's what really, you know, pushed me because I'm like, you know what? If God gave this to me, why would I not succeed? But again, what type of person are you? Are you a person that just makes excuses or you make things happen? Because I literally had to say, I don't care what she got going on. I don't care what he got going on. I have to stay in my lane. I have to stay focused. And people will buy from me because I have something different. I bring something different to the table. We might be in the same avenue, but we definitely driving down a different lane. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. We going at different speeds. You know, my creativity might be a little bit different. My advertising might be different. You know, my hustle and my growth Rhyme might be different. So I don't care how prosperous they got going over there. There's still a lane for me. There's still room for me. And you have to believe that because there's a McDonald pretty much on every corner. But guess what? They all stay packed. They all, everybody getting business, everybody buying them fries. I'm just using that as an analogy because it doesn't matter how many businesses are out there. We can all eat. We can all get it. You have to stay focused on what you're doing and not worry, not get distracted by what other people are doing because you make your own destiny. You cannot get distracted by what everybody else got going on. Social media will have you messed up. You'd be like, man, everybody's business is doing good. But listen, half of them is just a facade. Half of them want you to think that. So when I decided to, you know, um, sign up for a mentorship program, I went to someone who I knew was doing good. I went to someone who I knew, you know, had interactions, whose business was, you know, sort of like mine in the same niche and who I knew that, you know, could really help me. But at the same time, they still didn't give me everything I needed to know. So, you know, I had to make my own way. I literally had to grind. But back to when I lost everything, when I tell you I got scammed out of all my money, um, I got a phone call and I don't know how this happened because I normally have my guard up. I normally got my antennas on and I'm like ready, but I guess it caught me at a time, you know, I'm dealing with, you know, situation with my son, you know, I'm just kind of feeling low. I don't know what happened, but all I know is they made me think that my money was gone, but I'm not going to even get into all the details because I don't want to, you know, prolong the video, but I lost everything. I lost every dime. I lost every dime, every nickel, every penny, every cent. And when I say that um, I just wanted to die, I could have, but I'm like, you know what? Okay, I, I can't stay here. I literally can't stay here because I have a child. I have a mouth to feed. I'm doing business. I don't have no other income. My income that I had was literally like two months of rent saved up. I went through a period of, did I make the right decision? How could I let myself be open and vulnerable to this? Because here I am starting this new business. Now I have my son. I have no regular income coming in. I only got income now from my sales. And I literally just made some good money. And I just turned around and pretty much lost it all. <sighs> now I need my faith to really step up because this is when, you know, when things hit you, when you go through storms, you have to really see what you're made of because I, so I made a post on Facebook about how I lost everything, not trying to get sympathy. I don't remember everything that was said, but I basically just let people know, didn't ask for one dime or anything like that. Just let people know that, you know, I've been scammed. I was so distraught. 
I just felt like I was being torn down. I just felt like every time I tried to take a step forward, I was just thrown back three, four steps backwards. Someone replied, you know, an old church friend, um, and they would say, you need to, you know, put your cash app up. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. Because everyone always looked at me from ever since I lived in New York, you know, always looked at me as the one who's had it all together. Everyone's always looked at me as the one who always had the good job, never had to do for. My mother didn't help me with my house. My father didn't help me with my house. No one bought me any cars. I did all those things for myself at a very young age, from buying my house, from buying my cars, everything like that. Like no one ever gave to Trina. No one ever gave to me. So I'm like, why would they give to me now? You know, um, I moved, I relocated, did everything on my own. So how would I look after I just quit my job, after I just did a launch? And that would have been like, okay, we knew you was going to fail. Now you're telling us you got scammed out your money. Please, ain't nobody giving you a dime. So that was just me and my headspace thinking like, that's what people are going to say about me. Um, but she was like, you, you just need people will help you if you need it. Like, cause you have your son over there. You, you, you gotta eat, you gotta pay your rent. My rent, my car note, everything was due literally in about two weeks, two weeks. I believe it was due. I, I was stressing. I was really stressing. I was freaking out. I thought reports, I did all that stuff, but I did not get one dime back. It was a Zelle transfer, so I didn't get one dime back. I mean, I went through so much and nothing. The bank never repaid me any of my money. So I did make another post and I did put my cash app up, but not axing, not begging. Next thing you know, my phone is just going off, going off, going off. I'm just, I look at my phone and I'm like, what is going on? Cash app after cash app. Um, text after text, call after call, people just started pouring into me, pouring into me and my son. And I was just like, I was really blown away. I was really blown away because I'm, you know, I'm the type of person I do keep to myself. I'm a hustler, I'm a grinder, but you know, I don't believe in um, asking people for things. I don't believe in, you know, putting myself out there get you know so I've never done that before never done that you know it's being vulnerable it's being you know you put yourself out there and you're like okay who really likes me you know um do people like so that was my fear like you know you know you got people they say you know your family say they love you because they have to love you but who really loves you enough during the midst of covid to give to you when they have their own bills they have their own problems they have their own jobs and lives but when I say people poured into me, then I got a phone call from, you know, a, a, one of the first ladies from one of our other churches. And she called me and she's like, I heard about what happened. And um, her son must have told her, you know, because she definitely ain't on Facebook. And she said, you know, I don't have much, but I know God is going to give you double what you lost. You know, and I lost a few K's. I lost a few stacks, you know, that I had in my bank account that I had built up. You know, so it was devastating. No, I was not rich. No, I didn't have 10,000. Everybody was like, how much did you lose? Just know I lost everything. Um, so she said, God is going to give you double. And I was just like, okay, you know, I got to believe her, right? I got to have faith. I got to start, you know, I got to start picking myself back up from here because I can't stay here. Um, it's okay to feel down a few days, but I got to pick myself back up because I got to keep going. You know, I got to, this rent got to be paid. Um, so now I'm like, Lord, I need to activate this faith. Now I need you to, you know, do what you say you're going to do in your word and not preaching or anything, but that's just how I am. I'm just driven by faith. I'm just, you know, moved by grace. I'm just moved by God's grace, you know, so that's the name of my company, Moving Grace. I move, everything I do, literally, I just move in God's grace. I move, I'm driven by faith, I'm propelled, and I have to believe that, you know, things will work out for the good. And I just stopped worrying. I stopped worrying. And my mother, who's a praying woman, she felt so bad for me. She just felt so bad for me because my mother has just never been in a position to ever really give to me financially, to ever really help me. So she felt so bad that she couldn't help me and her grandbaby. Um, she was like, you know what? Uh, you just got to believe. You got you to pray that God is going to do it for you. 
So when I say all these cash apps just started coming in, all these cash apps just started rolling in. My uncle who got rest his soul just literally passed away. He's not on Facebook at all. He called me, him and his wife. They gave me like a lump sum. My family came through for me 100 fold. When I tell you it was nothing but God's grace, I'm not going to cry because me and my son could have lost everything. I could have lost my home. I had to end up turning to my landlord and I had to say, I lost everything. I can't pay my rent. This is before my money started coming in. And I had to tell him, for me, never being late on rent, never being late, never had a late payment in my life with anything. Me being a former homeowner in New York and having tenants and stuff, I knew what it was like not to get your rent on time. You know, I'm like, I never, I never wanted to be that person. He was like, no problem. I will push your date back. You let me know when you have the money. Who does that? What landlord does that? You know, so that was just nothing but God's favor and grace. Um, but I didn't even have to pay late. I turned right back to him like two or three days before my due date. And I was like, I have the money. He was like, how did you get the money? I said, my family, my church family, I got the money. But it, it just goes to show you that, you know, anything can happen. You never know what's going to happen. My situation is probably completely different from, you know, you all. But I'm just trying to motivate you that you just got to keep going. I was prepared. I was prepared after I got out of my, you know, slump after a day or two. I was prepared to be like, all right, I got to do a new launch. All right, I got to create some new, new designs. I didn't have money to buy new inventory, but I was going to have to take the money that I had from the sales, whatever leftover, you know, garments or apparel that I had and I was gonna be like all right we're gonna have to do some sales we're gonna have to do some promotions because I gotta get some money but next thing you know and the people who didn't give me financially started to buy from me even more I was just like you know God I thank you so that just like gave me another confidence boost that just motivated me and I got back a hundredfold plus than what I lost you know I just believe I'm a firm believer God is not gonna bring you to a place to just leave you to abandon you now, everyone doesn't have the same faith I have. Everyone doesn't have the same belief I have at all. But it helps. It, it definitely helped me. That's my story. That's my journey. How I left my job in the middle of the pandemic. How I left my job based on my son's circumstances. Then how I turned around and lost everything. And how I recouped and rebuilt back. That's when I started my Etsy business to supplement my income. Started my whole YouTube journey as well. Because this was, you know, something that I'm like, all right, how are people going to receive me on YouTube because you know I'm just starting out like, I know how hard it is to find the answers I know how hard it is when you know no one is giving you what you need to start but you have to make up in your mind if this is something that you want to do no matter what come hell or high water are you going to stick with it are you going to like go through all the trials and tribulations because even though my situation was different something might happen to you now some people have it all good it's all gravy but for some of us you know we will have challenges we will have struggles and things that we have to get through or overcome but are you going to get out of bed even when you don't have a sale when you don't feel like it on a cold snowy day like it is today i'm up recording i'm up you know doing digital mock-ups and different things are you going to work hard when you're by yourself, when no one is watching? You truly have to want this. You know, entrepreneurship is not easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it. Why do you think everyone isn't doing it? There are people who go to job, have a nine to five, and then there's people who are self-employed and making it happen. And I'm not nowhere near where I want to be. But guess what? I'm not where I started. I'm not where I used to be. You know, I started one day with nothing. And now, you know, here I am. I'm not going to tell you that it's been easy. I've messed up so many things. I had to go back to the drawing board so many times. I had to get a group of close knit people who I really felt that, you know, I trusted who really believed in me that I could say, I bring to my ideas and I say, okay, how does this look? How does, how, what do you think about this? Because you do have to have people's opinions. You do have to see what real people think. And if they like it and you're like, cool, but sometimes you have to go with your own feeling as well. So I'm hoping this video wasn't too all over the place. Um, I'm hoping that I conveyed my story well because it's kind of hard, kind of difficult for me to talk about certain things. But, you know, I just wanted to be open and transparent with you that starting a business, you know, takes risk. It takes challenges and you will go through different life situations and circumstances. Sometimes things don't always fall into place when you want them. Sometimes things don't always go according to your timeline. You just have to be realistic with yourself. You have to be realistic with your finances, with your 
your budget with you know the type of person you are you know are you going to do it by yourself are you going to have someone to help you and i literally started in my bedroom um, not my personal bedroom, but my spare bedroom. So I'm in my bedroom right now. You know, where are you going to, you know, work from? What are you, how are you going to start? You know, I had to make sure I had the right equipment. So I got my first heat press and I didn't want to have to risk buying another heat press. So I didn't go the cheap route. So when it came to my equipment, I bought a really good heat press. The, the heat press that you see me using the majority of the time is my 16 by 20 from Heat Press Nation. That's what I started out with. I was like, what heat press do I start? out with you know I wanted a good quality heat press because I'm not just doing crafts I'm doing a brand I wanted a heat press that was going to last that was going to be a work cost so that's what I went out with that one I invested in myself um, I took my money and I had to be like you know what this money is going to turn my business will pay for the heat press and it has done that over and over again so you know I had to buy a good machine I didn't go with the Cricut at first because Cricut is more so for crash so I went with the Cameo because it had a larger workspace you know for me to work and cut with and surface area for me to print and all that so the decisions I made for me and my business uh, you know they didn't come lightly I had to research so I didn't have the money to buy all the stuff that I have now I made my table everyone asked me how did I you know where did I buy my table from that holds my heat press I made that that's my very first video on this channel y'all go back and watch that how your girl built a table um until i could start building up an income and then i bought my next craft table i bought the desk you know i didn't have everything this room was bare and empty you know so i am where i am today because of the grind everything i do is for my son every single thing i want to leave him something behind so whatever your motivation is whatever your reason why is you gotta stick with it it has to be something that is going to compel you that no matter what what comes no matter what wind blows your way you're gonna say you know what I gotta do this I, I have to do this so if it's if it takes leaving your job then by all means but I always say make sure you have a plan make sure you know you have your T's crossed and your eyes dotted make sure you have some stream of income because anything can happen you want to make sure that you're just not leaving cold turkey walking away and you don't have some sort of income you don't have you know a plan so you want to make sure before you just leave your job cold turkey because I did give them my two weeks notice and I was you know second guessing myself in the beginning like should I leave you know because you always like oh do I want to get into this deep water right here you know you might want to start in the shallow end first but I jumped straight into deep water but that's just me and my faith that's just me and my situation and my circumstance and I just was like you know what I'm gonna make this happen I put it out there no turning back now so when you make the decision to take that leap of faith when you start your business you start your journey you have to you know stick with it if you're not willing to put in those long nights and do what it takes and research and not give up when no one is giving you the answers because you guys ask me so many questions in the videos and I can't physically answer every single question you know sometimes things are not a one two three step answer but I will be doing mentorship calls I will be doing a mentorship program of some sort once I move because I do have to move so I promise you, if you stick with me in this journey, you'll have front row access to everything I'm doing because I'm about to go big this year. 2022 is going to be my year and I'm literally getting ready to start something else that might help you all out as well. So definitely stick with me and stay tuned. I'm telling you, it's going to be lit this year. So I have my crafting videos for all my craft lovers and then I have my clothing Christian brand for all the ones who want to have a clothing line, a brand, an actual brand. So, you know, my craft business is on Etsy and and my clothing brand is on Shopify. So, you know, I'll be bringing all that to you more so. So just stick with me on this journey. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you guys in the next video. Be unstoppable. Go be great. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.